Alright, so today I'm going to show you guys how I cover my Ponto Plus. It's the regular model, not the power model. But the same basic concept will apply for the power model as well. Basically, there's uh, four main areas. You have the button to cover. You have the sides. And those two sections I'll do last. And then you have the flat area here. And then you have to carefully cover around the two mics and around the outside of the button. So first I use um, my nail foils. I like the Jamberry ones because they come in a lot of cool patterns. And first thing I usually do is I take a look. This is what I have left from another um, pimp. And I kind of decide what I want my button to look like and what I want this area to look like so that I leave that free here for the end so I don't use it up. So I think I'm going to do my button as part of this right here and then use the part below it for the lower part here to kind of finish it off nice. So I'm not going to touch that one. The first step is to get a nice curved look around the button and around the mic. So I'll show you how I like to do that. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use too much. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to take this one because it's kind of pretty neutral. It doesn't have a big bouquet in the middle like that one does. I peel it off and I take my embroidery scissors. Nail scissors will work too. These are a little better because they're not curved. Or any small pointy scissors. And what I like to do is I like to take my scissors and just cut about a little curved section off. And I try and leave the width to be about, like you can see, kind of maybe three to four millimeters in the middle. And then I'm just going to place this around the curve and stick it down. And because jamberries are supposed to be applied with a little heat, I usually rub it a little bit. It helps it stick better. The goal is to make sure that at the um, after you get it around, that you can fill in the side like I was showing in the beginning. You can fill that side in and not have a gap between where you covered from the button and the strip we're going to put around the outside at the end. It gives you a nicer seam that way. So that's a good length. So then I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to cut a curved piece. And this one might be, might be too curved actually. Nope. That one fits well too, so I'm just going to stick that down and I overlap them and I might have to go back and put a little more right there where it's thin, but I'll do that after I get the basics around the button first. So then I'm just going to cut another curved piece, oops, Let's see how that works on the, well that's pretty shot because I dropped it, don't drop it. So I'm going to cut another curved piece and try not to drop it this time. So I'm going to overlap it again. See we're going around here. And I'll come back and get those sections better later. You, want it, you don't want a big piece chunk sticking out kind of like there, so I might actually cut that off and use that to fill in a gap. You can see I'm kind of using my fingers to hang on anything. And this matches over here better than here. So this is where I'm going to stick it. I'll show you when I get it on there. So then that fills in the hole and it sort of starts to blend in my camera will focus. So then I'll take this curved piece I have and maybe I'm going to put this one on this side. And you might lay it down. It comes peels off pretty easily as you're putting it down. And it will at the end, too, when you take it off, when you're ready to do a different pimp. So, again, I'm just smoothing that around. See, I'm getting that pretty well. So I pretty much just need one more piece for that. It doesn't take too long once you're, once you're going at it. And this piece I'm going to... If you can see... That pink on the side, and then that green's gonna try and match that up pretty good. Helps hide the seams when you match up the colors like that. And now I have a nice big piece there. 
So then I kind of want to make sure this is as far away as I want it for the strip. And I might even put a piece right where my thumbnail is because it's not quite covering until it's flat on the side. And you can look at your device and you'll see that better. So I might take a little piece here, make sure I don't drop it again. And just kind of stick this in here. Rub it down. And then the same thing at the top right there is not quite covered well enough. So I'm going to take this again. Triangles work well for this since that's kind of the size of the area of the triangle. And it wastes less than if you were to make a square for that. And then that doesn't matter or anything because we're going to cover that up at the end with the strip. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, that's a little loose too, so I'm going to put a piece there too. So let's see, right here. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to try and match up and see where the flowers might look the best to make it look like one thing. I'm a little shaky. And it doesn't matter if it's way into that strip area. Um, it'll just cover it up at the end. So now that I have the button area covered on all, all the way around, and it looks pretty decent. I didn't get a lot of, and it might take your practice to make it look so nice and uh, smooth rather than jaggedy around the outside of the button, but you'll get better at practice. So the next thing we want to do is work around the two mics. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. So same thing. I usually use four to five pe little pieces. So this piece I can even cut in half again. And very similar. I'm just going to see if I can get this to focus for you. I'm going to put this down right next to the mic hole. And this piece then I'm going to go across on the opposite side, kind of parallel. I don't want to touch the mic. I'll show this when I'm done. But I do want to get close to it so I have a small gap. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. So you can see it's right up against the mic hole. So I'm going to take another strip, remembering that I decided to save this one here. I think I'll start with this strip. It's smaller. I don't need too much more. That one will be better for these strips on the side at the very end. So again, it doesn't have to be very big at this point, so that's plenty big enough, probably too big, but we'll go with it for now. And I'm going to lay it down next to the mic hole on that side, 90 degrees perpendicular to the first two. I'm a math person. And then I need one more for that mic hole, and I'll do the same thing to the other mic hole. Again, the pieces don't have to be that big, because again, we're going to cover, cover the majority up again at the end. I'm pressing pretty firm. You can see my nail turning white as I press. You're not going to hurt the device to push on it like that. It's hard plastic, right? So I'm going to do this side. Again, right next to the mic hole, but not on it. Rather be too far away than covering it up because you're not going to hear as well. Especially if you're doing this for a little one and they can't tell you. But you can get right up against them as long as I and uh, not have too many ill effects. Let's see if I can get this to zoom in and focus for you. There we go. So you can see how close I am, really. So I'm just going to continue to go around this hole. And sometimes when you get a patterned foil like this one, where this is all pink all of a sudden, sometimes that's hard to work with and sometimes I end up just cutting that portion out and not using it because it's hard to match up and make it look normal but since we're kind of covering this area back up you'll see what I mean in a moment here it's not such a big deal so now we have both mic holes showing and we have our button covered and this is probably going to take you a little longer your first couple times doing this I've been doing this for a while so my next step is I want to make this bottom piece look a little nicer. So again, I'm at this point, I don't really want these roses, so I'm going to flip this around. Just kind of cut a piece out. Maybe even half of that. And 
And I always like to use the, make it look really sharp, so I put the flat edge on the bottom, rounded edge here, up, and I'm making sure it doesn't go over my mic holes, that's the most important thing. Rubbing it on, especially over the curves of the device, you're going to have to rub to make it stick nice. Heats it up a little, makes it set better. And then, let's see, where can I stick this piece? I'm going to make sure, see like here, it's not quite close enough to the edge for the strip to cover. I'm going to look over here at the same thing. I have kind of a hole here, so I'm going to place this here to make it more viable for the strip at the end. I won't cover that with the top. Some of this will be more obvious when I'm doing when we get to putting the strip on at the end so you may have to go back and watch. And then I want it a little over here too so this I'll use the flowers for because you're not going to see much of it. And that'll mainly be covered up. I just need a very small hole. Again, I've, I know exactly where I'm going to be putting it later, so I can get away with that. And then, so now we're going to do the strip around the out. Oh, yeah, we'll do the strip. We're going to start it. We're just going to put the strip just down here. So I'm going to cut a strip from this. We're doing it now because I have this piece. And you want it to be about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bigger. I'm going to stick this back on my paper in case I need it. So about like that, this is maybe a little too thick, but you're going to put it from where your butt, your volume button is, you can see that good, and you're going to match it up with the back edge of the device, the Ponto, and then you're going to stick it down, and you need to leave your uh, cable uh, plug open, which I can't get to focus, where it's gold. You want that left open so they can change settings if they need to. So I just kind of push it down and then see where it's going to fall and cut it off with my embroidery scissors. So then I have that area covered nice. Let's see if it's focusing. So I have this little piece. So I'm just checking to make sure I have this covered well. I do, so I don't really even need this piece might just stick it there, just get rid of it. So then you can either leave the top if it looks nice. This one's not that bad, actually. You can leave the top, if we can get it to focus. There we go. But in this case, it doesn't match up real well, and I'm doing this to show you guys. So I'm going to cover this, this area up with one piece so that it looks more not like all these tiny little pieces you saw me put on. And this is where I'm going to go to this piece here that I decided on at the beginning. And I do sometimes cut, as you can see, the pieces in half here. This part I'm going to use for the button. So I'm going to cut off, just gauging by my eye. Oops, my phone is falling. We'll see what we can do with this to make it not fall. Okay. So this part I'm leaving for the button. So I'm going to gauge this width here and just kind of make sure I leave enough space and cut that. And I'm just going to set that aside. And then this part I'm going to put down here. So I don't need, uh, maybe I'll peel it off. That might be a little easier. I always go back and forth in this stage. So what I need to do is cut this round just like I did when I was at the beginning. It doesn't have to be as good as the beginning because you got it right up against the device. And I lay it down, kind of matching up the best I can. But I don't want it to fall the way down. So I stick my nail there. Like this doesn't look very good here, so I don't know if you can see. I'm cutting that off so that the whole flower there sh stays showing. And then I, I'm going to lay this down, but I want to make sure I don't cover my mics. So I'm going to work on one side at a time. I'm going to kind of see where my mic is, kind of eyeball where it's going to be, and I just kind of cut out a triangle so that the mic will be showing. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. And the more exact you can get, the better, but it's not crucial to be totally exact because it isn't black anymore, as you 
you know, underneath. So it just looks a little nicer, more co cohesive, as if you will. And then I just have to trim the bottom, and it actually works better if you trim it up closer, because otherwise it kind of doesn't overlap too well. Uh, it kind of tends to buckle and fold. So now that looks a little more, if it'll, let's see where the focus is. So now it looks more like it's all one sheet rather than all those little pieces stuck together like I had. So before we do the button, I always save that for last. I always feel like, I don't know, it's easier. So I'm going to do the strip that I'm going to run along this whole length. And it probably is going to be more than one strip, obviously, because that's longer than a nail foil. But I'm always, I always start at this side and work my way up. I don't know why. So I'm going to take this one that I have whole still and cut it into strips. And in this case, I think, well, not quite. I was going to say I could just do it in half, but I think that will be a little too wide. If you leave it too wide, it buckles a little bit um, when you try and go around the curves. So a little too narrow is better than too wide, which is why when we were doing this I wanted you guys to make sure you bring that part out far enough so that this will cover. So then I have these strips that I cut. Just peel them off. And I usually make one round, one edge square so that when I put it against here it lines up well. And again, matching up with, pay attention to this back edge here when you're going through. The front edge will take care of itself. It doesn't have to be even. Um, you won't notice that too much. And then I always rub it down real nice and good. And now I probably can just do one more section and I'll be good. So pick that up. And I always kind of try and decide which end I'm going to put closer to here, depending on what it looks like. And in this case, I think this one matches up better. So this is the one I'm going to go with. Making sure you get all the black covered, in my case, or whatever color aid you have. This one's a little fatter, so you'll see a little more ruffling through here. But if you push down hard enough, these Jamberry ones are really good at that. And then covering that, getting down flat. Same thing as before, when we get to the volume button, we just cut it off so that it's not going to cover the volume button. Rub it down nice and good. So we've got the whole outside of the device covered now. It looks pretty nice. My camera will stay focused. So now we just need to do the button in the middle. So here's the piece that I left for the button. And I like the nail foils because you can kind of match up and see the width and see how it's very similar in width. I always pick one that's similar in width to the width of the button, the diameter. And then this edge here is a little, not quite a circle-ish, but it's very close. So I start with that. And this time I usually leave it on the sheet that it came on. I don't unstick it yet. And then I just kind of cut my circle out. And then I take a look at it, because I'm usually not good on the first try. Like, this one's kind of more an oval right now. So, let's see. I'm going to shave a little bit more off this side here. Don't want to go too far. You can always take up more, but you can't put it back, right? And then I'm going to match it up to my device, see if it'll fit. This one looks pretty good. And I'm going to decide how I want it positioned, you know. I think I want this one like I had it to begin with here. I'm going to peel it off, trying not to fold it over in the process, and then I'm going to try and place it down and rub it around. And it's a little too big, which usually I get them too small, so I'm just going to peel that back up and kind of do my best to kind of come around and get it so it fits in there. Or you can just leave it, it'll probably work just as, just as well that way too. And then I usually smooth it down. I'm a little more gentle in here since the button does push down and I don't want to overuse the button. And there we have it. And if you want, you can use, uh, put some sticky back gems or pearls on here. I think for now I'm just going to leave it. 
So there you have it. We started by putting all these little sections to cover around the button and around the mics. Then we put a piece on the front to make it all look cohesive. cohesive. Uh, filling in, starting back here on this corner because I had an extra piece in my hand. And then we put the strip around the outside and then we covered the button. And now we have a nice newly pimped Ponto. Hope you enjoy this and hope it helps.